This summer past, we journeyed to Prague, Czechoslovakia, to attend the International Transpersonal Conference, a meeting of philosophers, psychologists, anthropologists, writers, ecologists, and thinkers on global subjects. Throughout the conference, we were able to track down and interview some of the movers and shakers whose ideas and hopes will shape the new millennium. Prague was a fitting venue for this meeting, poised as it is at the center of European crisis and promise. It is a metaphor for the transformation of the planet and of human psychology that must take place if we are to provide a sane future for our children. I'm standing in the center of one of Central Europe's most beautiful and mysterious cities. This is Prague, Czechoslovakia, and I'm Terence McKenna. We're here to meet with some of the world's most outstanding thinkers to discuss science, spirituality, and the mounting global crisis. And it's fitting that we should meet in this, the capital of ancient Bohemia, for Prague and Bohemia have always stood for intellectual innovation, chance-taking, and the life of ideas. In the Jugendstil splendor of one of Prague's most famous concert halls, we encountered Richard Alpert and persuaded him to have lunch with us. Alpert, who now calls himself Ram Das, is one of the most enduring figures from the American cultural upheaval of the 1960s. Alpert, whose career reaches from Harvard University to the plains of the Punjab, has transformed himself into a spokesman for humanities ignored and downtrodden. And Ralph Abraham was sitting across the table watching me this have this it, conversation. Yeah, and when after it. Steiger left, Ralph leaned over to me and he said, so you see, Terence, the mushroom is telling you that it can reach out and touch you anywhere. And I thought that was uh, amazing. Uh, yeah. Well, any time you would like to or feel that you have the time to guide me through anything at all, I'd be happy to be your... Oh, Oh, and, uh, excuse me, sir. You, you are not the famous uh, Terence Mushroom McKenna. That is you, my, uh, my friend. I, 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 it I, I am is. aware of. That's him. It That's is. Oh, how wonderful. It is. Yes, sir. Please do welcome uh, you on our Bohemian Highway. Oh, I especially you. bring you a very good uh, black uh, coffee and uh, espresso. And uh, If you may tell me, who is the attractive elderly gentleman you brought on your side on your companionship here? This is Mr. Dawes. Oh, uh, the MS Dawes, yes. No, the oh. Ram Das. Oh, the the CD Ram. Um, CD Ram, yes. Oh, the, CD Ram the, the, the LSC, the LSD LSD Das. The LSD Das. Yes, the one. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Take this and build the beam. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank very you. Bohemian. And uh, <laughs> so uh, this. Uh, I am so happy to be in your fair country. Oh, my country, very fair, and uh, happy to have the LSD experience. You know, you. What is your name? Cubes. What is your name? Uh, my name is Waiter. Waiter, waiter. Yes. how do you do, Waiter? waiter. Okay. A pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. See you, Waiter. Okay. <laughs> See you, Waiter. <laughs> you don't think there's any? It would. It would needs the external form of the mushroom. It would never have happened for me. I only argue from my own experience. Yeah, but you and I were both so thick in crap when it had. You know, that's why we needed it. Well, but there are a few others out there. We didn't corner the market on yeah. being thick and crap. Yeah, but I'm talking about somebody like a Ramana Maharshi or somebody like that. Oh, well, these you people. Know, I mean, there are people. Sure, who, but the idea is not to come up with something that the best among us can make hay with, but a, a democratic, uh, something which addresses the species. The thing that seemed to me so important about the psychedelic experience was that it happened to me. I wasn't reading John Chrysostom or Meister Eckhart. Exactly. Of course those guys. Right on. It happened to me. It happened to me. Yes. 
And, and so I assume that I am a very ordinary person. Therefore, if it happened to me, it could happen to anyone. And that's, that's really That's a question of all. There's a set of assumptions there. One, that you're a very ordinary person. And whether the same chemical given to a dozen people would bring about 11 other people like this. And I think it would be not, it, it would, the outcome would be very different. And that's, it, I keep getting cast into an evolution of consciousness model about individuals. Because there's such marked individual differences as to three people come before my guru, one completely goes, and the other two get a chapati. And people take psilocybin and they, some go like that and they go like that, and some go like that. And they go like that. Well, don't you think a good metaphor for it would be sexuality? Apparently, there are some people who can kind of take it or leave it, and others of us, uh, it rears its ugly head with great uh, presence. Yet everybody has to I come notice to as terms I get older, I move from one of these categories to the other. <laughs> it leaves so much space in my life. I don't know what to do with my free time. I hope it never happens to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just clinging. <laughs> just clinging. No, just aspiring to cling. <laughs> Actually, I live the life of an ascetic. It's my aspirations that are pulling me down. Uh, well, see, the great, the nice thing about this evolutionary argument is that you can sort of make the snake take its tail in its mouth exactly. because. Exactly. It does. The escape is not into some science fiction future. No. It's into an archaic recursion of some sort. We, we once knew everything we need to know. Yeah. So what we are trying to find out is lost knowledge, not new knowledge. And if you direct people back toward 10,000, 20,000 years ago, they see a kind of completion that an open-ended future is... Uh, it seems to me it's a, con it's a confusing thing to use time in that way because it makes the artifacts of that period seem to be valued as opposed to the artifacts of this period. And it seems to me that I... I mean, whether you, you call it not science fiction, but science fiction can also be very compassionate. It can be very historical.